Lawrence, this is a pretty exciting time uh, with all the technology that's going on and the innovation, whether it's in agriculture with driverless tractors or in energy with uh, shale and, of course, battery technology to financial technology, obviously algorithms, ETFs, and, of course, DLT or better. blockchain. And that led to the development of a virtual currency world of which we are now involved with. And I think it's really important for people to understand that the process by which a new contract gets created by the CME and other exchanges, um, there's two paths you can go down. There's a self-certification process and then there's a written approval process. So most of these guys come through with self-certification and we get involved and take a look at things because Bitcoin is so unusual. And the chairman has said, our chairman, uh, Chairman Gene Carlos said, uh, this is a unique animal unlike any commodity we've looked at before. We got involved with them earlier in the process. We, we modified it or encouraged them to modify parts of the contract. Uh, the margin is much higher than what they originally came to Is it safer? Will at. it be so, safer, Andy? Sorry to interrupt. We, we've got, as no, you it, know, you know the TV game. We've got limited time. But does yeah, this I'm make it safer? So I think, the, I think the thing is, is that what we're trying to do is show people that the, the exchanges they're the ones looking at the underlying cash contract to make sure it's not ma manipulated. Our role as a derivatives regulator is to make sure that the, the futures contract is not manipulated. We're going to do that for sure. And we're going to continue to work with the exchanges to make sure that Bitcoin is not manipulated in its use on the exchanges, right, in the derivatives. But I will tell you this, and this is really important for people to understand looking at Bitcoin, is that the underlying cash market is not regulated at this point. And I think it's important for, for investors and everybody else looking at Bitcoin and other currencies to keep that in mind when they're trying to make a decision on what to do with it. So how does that work? Has this ever happened? I mean, it's interesting that you invoke the, the words of your chairman saying that this is a commodity unlike any commodity we've seen before, when in actuality, the definition of commodity means something <laughs> that's sort of common and it's out there and it's not, in fact, unique. Um, so how does it work when you have the commodity itself in an unregulated market, but you have the futures contract in a highly regulated market? Is there a disconnect yeah. there? Is, does that in itself present some sort of risk? Let's say if Bitcoin trades down, uh, you know, 25 percent in one session and the limit down on a contract is 20 percent. Well, I think it's a green field for sure. I mean, and I think, if, you know, if we talk to anybody within the agencies, they say, well, one of the biggest challenges, it's the price volatility, clearly what you pointed out. But I would also say there's other financial products that have some similar characteristics. I mean, if you look at the VIX index and the volatility that's associated there, I mean, it, it moves in, in quite an, ex, you know, exaggerated ways at times or, or a high percentage change. So I think there's a lot of examples out there that, that you could use. And we have when we've run with internally looking at these contracts, we've run stress tests on them and, and we're, we're, you know, uh, we're moving ahead with it. So and I think the exchanges are comfortable with it as well. A uh, 35 percent margin means what exactly, Andy, on a Bitcoin future? Well, just to provide some context for that, the S&P has about a 5% margin. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Bitcoin, obviously, that's representative of the volatility that's associated with it. So it's, it's not going to be uh, easy in the sense of, you know, putting up that margin. But I think for those exchanges, they feel comfortable that that's the right way to go, that that will make it a smooth functioning contract. Hey, Andy, I've seen speculation that uh, this will actually put pressure on Bitcoin prices because people are able to be very easy to bet against it, which they haven't been able to do at this point, that hedge funds are kind of salivating about that. Do you worry about that? Well, we certainly are aware that there's some unique characteristics to Bitcoin in the underlying cash market that, that are unusual. I mean, in the sense of the development of the technology, the way that it works, there's a lot of things that have to continue to be evolved uh, and involved with the underlying cash contract. And I think as you provide more people looking at it, as you provide more access to it, I think it's such a nascent uh, commodity, if we're going to use that term, um, that I think it will, as it matures, I think you'll start to work out some of these issues with it. it far be it from us to make a decision on which technological muster seed you know, but why, why allow it? Why not. allow it so early? Do that. If it's so greenfield, Andy, why allow futures trading so early? I mean, you take a look at Bitcoin and how it trades around the world. There's a huge discrepancy in price itself. You can take a look at where it trades in Zimbabwe versus South Korea versus in Luxembourg, and they're all—it's all over the map in increments of thousands 
of dollars at times. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly a very fragmented market, but I would say as you add people into it, um, I was just thinking the other day, you know, as, as far as the hedge funds are concerned and those guys, I, I'm sure they're excited about the ARB opportunities that are out there. I'm not suggesting that that's the great way to go, but I mean, that's how you start to get a, a, a market to mature is when you have other actors come in and start and to try to corner look it at those and take advantage of it. prices <laughs> and, and go after it. And so yeah. I think it's part of the process of a new contract. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.